Joining us right now is the former Reagan economic advisor and former economic senior advisor to the mm -hmm. Jeb Bush presidential campaign, Martin Feldstein. Marty, good to see you. Good to be with you so all. Let's talk about, I want to get your take on the economy and all of that. Obviously, you're so smart on all that stuff. But these comments from Sanders, does it surprise you about all of this talk now that everything is rigged? Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. And certainly what Sanders was saying about the economy being rigged, uh, more inequality here, he needs to travel a bit. Yeah, he needs to go and see what's happening in India or see what's happening in Mexico. So we are certainly not a nation of great inequality compared to those places. I guess part of it is that like when we get the economic data on on any number of numbers, right, the jobs numbers or the GDP number, a lot of people say, well, that's not the right number. Unemployment, for example, they say, okay, we're at 5% unemployment, but then other people will say, well, that's not right. It's actually 9%. That also feeds into this idea that the people are not getting the truth. Well, they get both numbers, and it is true that not everybody who wants a job has a job. On the other hand, with an unemployment rate of the level we have, about 5%, we're already seeing inflation increasing. So operationally, that's what unemployment, that's what limits uh, the unemployment number. So what do you think unemployment really is right now? Is it 5%? I think we're at full employment. I think we are essentially at full employment. If we pushed the economy harder. Yes, some more people would get jobs, but the inflation rate would be increasing more. And of course, these very, very low uh, interest rates are screwing up asset prices in a terrible way. Great now, what's, risk. Then, the, Martin, what's behind this anemic growth that we've been sustaining for, for so long? And how much longer can a country and an economy, uh, our size and dynamism, sustain just basically an average of 2%? Well, we were 1.4% last GDP, right? Yeah, but uh, the way we measure it uh, really understates what is happening, not just recently, but over the long haul, understates because the government statisticians don't have a way of dealing with quality improvements. So they don't take into account the fact that the products we buy, the services we get are getting better. They don't take into account the new products that are coming on stream. So we're really doing substantially better. I don't know by how much, but mm. substantially better than the official numbers suggest. That's so we're news. creating a, a very pessimistic view in the public by telling them that there hasn't been much economic growth when the reality is different. But, but wait a second, the reality is different than one, than, than one to two percent? Yes. What, yes. Is the, what is the actual economic growth number of this country then? I don't have a number, but what I'm saying is... Is it better is than three percent? It could well be. If you took into account the new products that are coming along, the new services, the, the growth of those things, uh, we would be talking about a much higher number. Wow. But, so, uh, you know, Marty, so you say we're at full employment. Um, you, say, you say inflation is starting to move up. Wages still seem stagnant. Maybe that's a measurement issue based on what you're saying. But how, how, how do we get that higher? How do we get this non-farm productivity, which has been down uh, at least a couple of quarters in a row now, how do we get that higher? Yeah. So I don't problem. know. The, I wish I knew the answer to that. And it's certainly true that for the last few years, we've had uh, unusually low productivity growth, unusually low, therefore, uh, income growth. And the economists, a lot of economists are trying to figure that out, and they come away scratching their head and saying, well, we just don't know what did it. And maybe we will just bounce back to the kind of numbers we've seen in the past. So uh, that's just a fact. There's nothing much we can, uh, I don't think there's much we can do about it. We certainly can't get a demand-driven boom uh, in the way we have in certain other times. Well, well, if not, I mean, is, is, this, a, is this a question of, of fiscal policy, providing the right type of, of credit and motivation for employers to no, money the problem? No, I, I repeat, I don't think we know why the productivity numbers have been low recently, last few years. Uh, they were unusually high a few years before that. Uh, it's a very hard thing to measure, and so, Agreed. and if you break it down and you look not at total productivity but by individual industries, it's all over the lot. Some are up a lot, some are down a lot. It, I just don't know what to make of those kinds of numbers. Marty, we got to get your take on the election and on this debate tomorrow night. Uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton going to the debate. Uh, Chris Wallace has said entitlements mm -hmm. are going to be one of the, the topics. What do you want to hear from each candidate in terms of entitlements and debt? What I'd like to hear and what I expect to hear. So what I'd like to hear is they face up to the fact <clears throat> that we have a large debt. The debt to GDP ratio has doubled in the last decade. 
It's projected to move up substantially in the decade ahead. Uh, so nobody in this election is talking about policies to rein that in. And similarly, nobody's talking about dealing with the uh, growth of the entitlements. And if you don't deal with the entitlements, you can't rein in the deficits. Are they, is it doomsday though? Because again, the candidates aren't talking about it. Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. wants to e expand Medicare. She wants to make it available to younger people. She mm -hmm. wants to expand <clears throat> Social Security. Donald Trump not talking about it. Is that what it's going to take? Medicare, the trust fund runs out of money in 12 years. Is Congress going to sit around on their hands until that day comes and then people are going to get cents on the dollar in terms of their benefit. Well, that's sort of is what happened in 1983. We got right up to the crisis point and then they said, okay, we'll put some short-term patches in place and much more importantly, we'll increase the retirement age from standard retirement age from 65 to 67. Well, since then, Average life expectancy of people in their mid-60s has increased by three years. Right. So we ought to go back and do that same thing again. Raise the standard retirement age. Let people retire earlier if they want with an adjustment, but uh, raise the standard retirement age from 67 to 70 and look forward and say as life expectancies continue to increase, we have to modify those uh, those Social Security rules. Neither candidate wants to <clears throat> take away some promise that was already given to people. All right, we're going to wrap this up. But, Marty, real quick, since you think we're at full employment, I assume you think that we're going to see higher interest rates from the Fed soon. I hope we are, I, but I've been hoping that for three years. <laughs> so December? Yeah, we probably will. But, you know, it's still going to be super, super low. If they move up by another quarter of a right. point, we're still going to be under 1%. In an economy that where CPI, core CPI is rising more than 2%, right. in an economy at full employment, you don't want a negative real interest rate, and that's what the Fed is delivering. Marty, good to see you. Good to Thank see you. Thank you so much, Martin Feldstein there. Fox